In this tutorial, I am going to show you how you can install and set up Feature Accounts on a Linux system. For those who don't know, Feature Accounts is a tool that is used to quantify RNA seq data. So, what you get at the end of the day is read counts data. You can read more by visiting this page. I'll leave the link to this page in the description box. You can also check the Source Forge page and then read more about Feature Accounts is part of the subread package. So if you want to install feature accounts, you need to install subread, then you will have access to feature accounts. So what we are going to do today is to install feature accounts um, using binaries. So we will download the subread package and then configure them. So let's go and then download them. You can download using the source forge page here. I will leave the link also in the description. And you can also go to this GitHub page here and click on releases and then download the binaries so what we are going to do is to download the binaries um, here i will leave the link to this page in the description so just on this page on this github repo here this page here move to the right side and then click on releases and then you'll be sent to the releases page and you can download the latest version which is this there's a version for Mac OS and Windows. There's the source that we will use binary. So use this tab with 2.0. So you can download by clicking it, downloading, or you can also use the terminal to download. Because I'll work on a terminal, I will get the download link and then download from the terminal. So I'll right click and then get the copy the link. I'll move to the terminal. So join me there. So on the terminal, I'll first see it to my home directory. Then I'll use the bridget to download the binary. So I'll see the bridget and then I'll supply it with a link. So this is a tab. So I'll execute this command to download it. Okay, so the file has been downloaded. Let's check it out. Let's do an ls and we will see this file here. It's a tabor. So what we have to do next is to extract the content of this tabor. So I'll say uh, give the file name. Now execute this. So this will extract the content. So I can check using ls. I will see another directory here, which has the binary. So I'll ls into that. There's also a bin directory. So we have to ls into the main directory, subread slash bin, gets the binaries. So if I want to run feature counts, I need to call this one here. So I can say subread bin, and then I'll call feature. So let's run this command. Okay, so feature count has been successfully executed. So that means that everything is okay. Let's do an ls into that directory again. With our current setup, whenever we want to install feature count, we need to specify the path to the feature count file here. So notice we have to specify the directory here and then bin and then we have to call feature count this command here but this can be problematic because in a linux environment you may be moving from one directory to the other so that means that always specifying the absolute parts sometimes can be inconvenient there is the likelihood of you making parts. so to make it better we can actually improve this we can we can configure our system so that we can just call feature counts like this and then execute this. But with what we have at the moment, if we do that, we are going to get this error message command not found. So, what we are going to do next is to configure our system so that we can only use this name, feature count here, to call the binary okay, and the other binaries for that matter. That's our job.
So that's what you are going to do. So first of all, let's do an LS again. Let's look at it directly. We are going to first um, move this directory. For me, I have a directory that I always um, install my packages in. Okay, so I have a directory where I stay, I save or store all my packages, my software, my tools. It helps me to be organized. It helps me to kind of separate my tools from other files on my system. So what I'm going to do here is to create a directory called apps. I'll say make that apps. Then I'll move this sub read that directory. As I am moving, I'll also rename it. So I'll say mvin-v. I'll say sub read, then I'll move it to apps. Say sub read. I want to move all these other ones, but you can keep them there. That's fine. But let's do it this way. So I'll move this there. After that, I'll move into that directory again and get the absolute part for feature counts. Let's do an ls again. We have our apps. Let's do an ls into apps. See our sub read. So let's ls again apps as sub read. Yeah. And also ls again sub read as bin and see our feature count here. So that's what we are going to do. We are going to get the absolute path for feature counts. And um, there are different ways you can use to get the same um, information, but because some of my viewers are beginners, they, they are likely to be beginners. I will use a um, very simple approach which everyone can follow and then can. So I will cd into this directory apps slash subread slash bin. So I will do that here. Let me just repeat this command. So I will cd. So I will say cd apps subread slash bin. And do an ls again to see the files. Now I am going to get the path of the feature counts. So I will say pwd. I will get this path. This is the absolute part. So this is what I need. You should also get yours. Yours is likely to be different. So make sure whatever you see there, you copy it. So I'll copy mine. And then I'll move to the home directory again. So I'll say CD. Now I am going to edit the dot file. So I'll edit it and then put in this absolute part there. Okay, so let's do this. The reason why we are going to edit this is that we want to make the changes permanent. For the change we are going to make, we want to make it permanent or persistent. So that whenever we open a new terminal, we can still call feature counts by its name here. So before we edit the bash rc file, we need to make a backup. So I'll say cp bash rc rc back. This is a backup. So if I do an ls, I'll see the backup there. We are making a backup so that in case of um, any um, so, that, so that in case we make any take the main file, we can always replace that main file with a backup. But hopefully nothing will go wrong. Okay, now we are going to edit the WSRC file. So I will say nano, but you can also use VI or any text editor for that matter. But I prefer to use I will say nano dash RC. I'll execute it. I'll then move to an empty line. Okay, so I have an empty line here of this. So I'll issue this command. I'll say export path because a path bring a colon and then I specify the path to. So I am adding this to our path, our system path. This this uh, variable here. So I will now exit this editor and then I also save the change of I will just okay. So now if I want to make the changes take effect, okay, I need to open a terminal. I repeat to see these changes. Okay, if you want to um, see these changes that we have made, if you want it to take effect, then you need to open a new terminal. So we are going to open a new terminal now and test feature count. 
okay i have opened a new term now so now i can say feature counts then i can execute it perfect so now everything has been done you can also check where this in the location so you can see which feature counts this will give us the which is this is what we copied and then um, added to our path so that's how we set up feature counts system so now we have been able to set up feature counts so let's do an ls again and then you will notice these files this and this now we don't need them so we will do a cleanup you can also leave them on your pc that's fine but i don't need them now so I'll just remove them just to less some space so i'll start with this one here the backup file so i'll say rm dash i specify the bash rc dot back the reason why i'm using dash i is so that the bash um, environment gives me another prompt i confirm it's just to make sure I am removing or deleting the right file or the right files because this command here, once you execute it, there is no turning back. Can't undo the change. So I will execute this command and I'll type Y for yes and the file will be removed. If I do an ls, it's no longer there. I'll do the same for this one. Issue this command. Perfect. So we have been able to do that. Let's do an ls and then not see that follows with that. So this is it. So this is how we install and then set up feature counts. So now that you have installed and set up feature counts, it's important you also watch this, which shows you how to quantify. Our